Icon of the Seas, Wonder of the Seas, Star of the Seas. What about other Royal Caribbean cruise ships? Today, I'm showing some love for the five Royal Caribbean cruise ships that nobody talks about, but I'm gonna share why you should go on them up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from Royal Caribbean Blog. Com. You know, it's easy to fall in love with the latest and greatest. New cruise ships just draw so much attention to them. And it feels like we've been talking about Icon of the Seas for like two years because, well, we have been talking about Icon for two years. But when it comes to new ships, they just draw the lion's share of the attention. But you might be wondering about the rest of the ships in the fleet because Royal Caribbean has almost 30 ships in its fleet currently, and there's plenty of good reasons to go on those. Every Monday right here on our YouTube channel, we do a live stream. That's not just a shameless plug, but actually a segue to explain that I get questions all the time about all ships in the fleet. And inevitably, I'll usually get a comment that goes something along the lines of like, hey, I never hear anything about blank of the seas. And they want to know what's all about. So I thought about what are the five Royal Caribbean cruise ships that have been more or less lost in the shuffle for whatever reason. Maybe they run just pedestrian itineraries and there's nothing really truly amazing about them. Maybe they don't have all the whiz-bang features that have been added to some of the newer ships in the fleet, and it just gets lost in that shuffle, as I mentioned earlier. So here are my five Royal Caribbean cruise ships that nobody talks about and what you need to know about them, starting off with Symphony of the Seas. Of course, Symphony of the Seas is an Oasis-class cruise ship, and I wanted to talk about the reasons why you might want to sail on Symphony and what makes the ship totally different. Number one, the Solarium is really nice. The Solarium on Symphony is, of course, the Delta-only area. It's on deck 15, but it also features a one-of-a-kind art installation that is comprised of thousands of dichroic acrylic elements. I hope I said that right. And at night, it lights up with a combination of pinks, blues, and greens. It's really pretty, and Symphony of the Seas has a pool in it. And if you remember, well, a couple of years ago, Harmony didn't have a pool, still doesn't, by the way, in the Solarium, and they added it back to Symphony of the Seas. Also, Symphony has Playmakers, and at the time it was a big deal because prior to this, over in the boardwalk, you would have had Sabor. But having Playmaker Sports Bar is a huge, well, pardon the pun, eh, home run. Get it? Anyway, there's 31 big screen TVs in there, and of course, one of my favorite, the Touchdown Sundays, really, really nice. And speaking of specialty restaurants, you'll also find Hooked on Symphony of the Seas, one of the few Royal Caribbean cruise ships that has the New England-style seafood restaurant. So if you're really into lobsters and clams and shrimp, and then this is definitely the restaurant for you. Also, neat little feature about Symphony of the Seas, not a reason to book the ship by any means, but I like it, is the hidden piano staircase. Found on deck 15 leading up to the Windjammer, on deck 16, there's actually a staircase that doubles as a giant piano. So as you step up the stairs, it plays a note. I think it's really cool, probably gets annoying if you sit there long enough, but don't stand around and you're totally cool on there. Of course, being an Oasis-class cruise ship, the entertainment options are truly amazing. First of all, you have Hairspray, the Broadway musical, which is probably my favorite Broadway musical on any Royal Caribbean cruise ship. Sorry, Mamma Mia. That being said, it's available on here. It's really cool, including your cruise fare. Over in the ice skating rink, Studio B, you'll have 1977, the ice skating show, which has light-emitting drones, which is a really neat effect. And over in the main theater, Flight, Dare to Dream, might be one of Royal Caribbean's best original productions because it really focuses on humanity's fascination with flying. And I don't want to ruin the finale, although I'm pretty sure Jenna's going to post the video in here anyway, but the right flyer that appears in the show is amazing. Being a newer Oasis-class cruise ship, the accommodations on Symphony really stand out. If you've been on Allure of the Seas or Oasis of the Seas, the room look to them are not nearly as updated or modern as you're going to find on Symphony. I don't know what we call this, but cabins on newer cruise ships that are built since like 2014, 2015 have a different look aesthetically than ships before that. Anyway, it's nice that they have this on Symphony. This looks a lot more modern. There's a lot more storage space on there. Next on my list of overlooked cruise ships nobody talks about, Liberty of the Seas. And Liberty being a Freedom Class cruise ship. The reason why Liberty gets glossed on the shuffle is pretty obvious in this situation because the other two Freedom Class cruise ships, Independence and Freedom, both got Royal Amplified and Liberty did not because Liberty was supposed to get it during like I think 2020 or 2021. That didn't happen because of the cruise industry shutdown. And as a result, she's kind of left in like a less of a status. But nonetheless, there are still some things that you should love about Liberty of the Seas. Number one, 
Sabor. So I still love Sabor Modern Mexican. It is a dying breed, especially a restaurant, but as someone who loves Mexican, number one, it's appealing to me. And number two, I really like their menu and the amazing margaritas. But by far, the freshly made guacamole is the star of Sabor. I just can't get enough of them. So if you're on Liberty of the Seas, make sure you stop by Sabor. It is a specialty restaurant. It is worth eating at if you ask me. Next up is that Liberty does have Splashaway Bay. Believe it or not, Liberty of the Seas was like the first cruise ship to test out Splashaway Bay, which was at the time Royal Caribbean's newest take on a water park for kids. If you have children, this is actually a great ship for you because Splashaway Bay is full of water slides, water cannons, waterfalls, and more. It's basically the kind of place where your kids won't want to leave because there's a giant drench bucket, multi-platform jungle gym, Met not only will the kids get and stay drenched while playing there, but they're gonna have a great time doing it. Also something kind of cool, maybe something different you want to change it up, is try one of the panoramic staterooms on Liberty of the Seas. If you think that staterooms on a cruise ship are the same from ship to ship, then you need to check out these panoramic rooms. So Royal Caribbean began adding staterooms that have floor-to-ceiling glass windows that provide a spectacular view. Now granted, these rooms lack a balcony, but having such an unobstructed view at your disposal is such a treat. Now the rooms range in size between 191 to 215 square feet. There's lots of space, which I absolutely love. Also unique to Liberty, only on this ship, is Saturday Night Fever, the Broadway musical. So I talked about Hairspray on Symphony, and Liberty actually has a Broadway musical on board, which is, of course, Saturday Night Fever. The musical depicts Tony, an ambitious Brooklyn teen, who spends his Saturday nights just go dancing, and it's a nostalgic look back to the 1970s. And lastly, let's talk about the water slides on Liberty of the Seas, because no sailing on Liberty is complete without, of course, checking out the water slides. Now, Liberty has the perfect storm water slides you'll find on many other roller fin cruise ships, but it has one extra slide you won't find on any other ship other than, of course, I think Icon has it now, so maybe I need to update this. Anyway, Liberty has a boomerang-style water slide known as the Tidal Wave. This slide features a steep drop that propels riders up a near-vertical wall for a moment of weightlessness and then into free fall. Really cool thing. The next Royal Caribbean cruise ship that nobody talks about is Explorer of the Seas, a Voyager-class cruise ship, kind of like Liberty. She never got upgraded in 2021 and kind of gets overlooked a lot, but I wanted to talk about things that really stand out about Explorer of the Seas. Number one, there is a hot tub in the spa. So when you walk around the pool deck of Explorer, you're gonna find lots of pool options, right? And of course, the hot tub is always popular, but did you know there is a bonus hot tub in the Vitality Fitness Center that you can use anytime? It's located right at the entrance of the fitness center, and it's rather large, actually, and most people have no idea it exists. Speaking of the fitness center, there are complimentary sauna steam rooms on board. So right across from the hot tub I just talked about in the fitness center, there are changing rooms, which also have access to steam and sauna rooms, and they're free to use during your cruise. Something else neat about Explorer of the Seas is there's something called the Peak of Boo Bridge, where guests can peer into the bridge of Explorer of the Seas almost any time. This observation window allows guests to look down onto the bridge and observe what the officers are up to in their daily navigational duties. To reach the Peekaboo Bridge, you just have to head up to Deck 11 and walk past the sliding doors that go forward of the solarium and don't seem to be leading anywhere, but trust me, they go there. From there, keep walking forward till you reach the front of the ship and you'll see that area. It's really neat to see what's happening on the bridge. And then of course, Explorer of the Seas, like all Voyager class cruise ships, has an amazing helipad to go to. Located on the bow, you can actually walk to the helicopter pad and enjoy unobstructed views that you can only get from this spot. From the helipad, you can enjoy a near 360 degree view of what is around Explorer of the Seas. To get to the helicopter pad, go outside of deck five and then walk forward, climb up a set of stairs, and continue walking forward until you reach the helipad. It's a really great spot for sail away. I love it every single time. You might be surprised by the next ship on my list here, but it's actually Odyssey of the Seas. And you're saying, Matt, Odyssey is like a brand new cruise ship, dude. Yeah, but it kind of got like lost in the shuffle because Odyssey of the Seas came out and then like two months later, Wonder of the Seas debuted and then it became the stepchild of the rest of the fleet. It was like, hey, what about me? But despite the fact that it's easily overlooked, I think Odyssey of the Seas is a great ship, even though maybe people don't talk about it nearly as much as some of the newer ships out there. Number one, it has 270 in Music Hall, great venues on any quantum class cruise ship. Usually when Royal Caribbean holds a 70s dance party or some other big celebration, they hold it right in the middle of the ship on the Royal Promenade. But on Odyssey, it has a specific venue for it, and this is a great change. 
Having the events held in either 270 or Music Hall, it's really meant for those who really want to dance to be part of the fun. Plus, both venues were large enough to really feel like a party, not some cramped room. The energy from this venue and the crowd in there really helps quite a bit. The added benefit is that means the Royal Esplanade is mostly clear and the musical acts in the pub or boleros could continue unabated. So there's not these weird pauses. I gotta admit, I'm a sucker for a really nice looking main dining room and Odyssey of the Seas might have the most beautiful main dining room in the entire fleet. While the actual food served in any restaurant is ultimately what makes it a good choice or not, I just really enjoy the look of it. Now, Spectrum of the Seas was the first cruise ship to adopt this look, but because Spectrum has been in Asia ever since her launch, well, I've only been able to go on Odyssey, and I'm gonna say arguably more people get a chance to go on Odyssey here in North America or even Europe, so we're gonna talk about it here. So what's neat about this is Royal Caribbean cut out the top of the dining room to open it up to the Via, and the overall aesthetic is really lovely. It's a fantastic looking room, so not that I would book a cruise because of the main dining room look, but it's an added benefit for going in here and something different compared to Anthem of the Seas or Quantum of the Seas or even Ovation of the Seas. Now, earlier I talked about the fact that I thought Flight was the best original Roller Caribbean production in the fleet. Can I change my vote now? Because Effectors is on Odyssey of the Seas and it might also be the best show right now in the fleet. With all due respect to the Broadway shows, if you want to look at just shows Roller Caribbean has created, I think Effectors is among my top choices. Between the music selections and the very impressive technical effects, I think Effectors has the best balance of pizzazz and story yet. While I still want Royal Caribbean to develop shows with a more coherent plot, Effectors has enough of it that it clearly stands out from every other show I've seen. And then we have the C-Plex, and the C-Plex is, well, fantastic. So Odyssey is the fifth Quantum Class ship. All the ships have the C-Plex, but they really figured this out perfectly on Odyssey of the Seas. So this is a great spot for guests of all ages, and it's really nice to have all different kinds of venues in there. It's really nice whether it's badminton or pickleball or volleyball or dodgeball. It's really cool that they have that. But the icing on the cake for C-Plex is Playmakers. I'm gonna say this right now, Odyssey of the Seas has the best Playmakers in the fleet. Royal Caribbean put Playmakers on the second floor of the C-Plex and it is, again, a home run. That's two puns in the same video. On most ships, Playmakers is either outdoors or overcrowded because it's conveniently located mid-ship. The outdoor locations are too hot or humid most of the time of the year for my taste. And on ships where it's indoors, it usually gets way too crowded because it gets overflow because it's right in the middle of everything. On Odyssey, it's air conditioned, has lots of space, and a giant screen to catch the game. Even when there's not a game to watch on the screen, you can watch the action below in the C-Plex. While I do like the Playmakers locations on Independence and Freedom, the Playmakers on Odyssey is the only Playmakers location that is a real destination for me during the cruise. And while I'm waxing poetically about Odyssey of the Seas, I really love, of course, Giovanni's Italian Kitchen and the wine bar they've added here. So instead of vintages, Giovanni's Italian Wine Bar took over the area on Odyssey of the Seas and offers a smaller bar menu such as fried lasagna bites. These small plates are meant to go really well with a glass of wine. For wine aficionados and those that are just looking to grab a bite, the new wine bar offers something different. And I really love this. So here's a little pro tip. If you can't get a reservation at Giovanni's Italian Kitchen, you can always go to the wine bar and order the same food there without a reservation. And lastly, I'm gonna talk about Brilliance of the Seas as a cruise ship that nobody really talks about, but you really should try out. So things I love about Brilliance of the Seas, first of all, the pub on Radiance class cruise ships is always, I think, one of the best designs out there. But on Brilliance of the Seas, there's actually a dartboard on there that you can actually play, which is really nice because after a few pints of beer, you might wanna to try to play darts, which of course is a pretty common trend in a real English pub, and they've got it on there. There's also two ways to watch a movie on Brilliance of the Seas. Like so many Royal Caribbean cruise ships out there, movies are shown in the evening by the pool. Poolside movies are great because you can combine catching a new flick while in the hot tub. But Brilliance of the Seas also has a dedicated movie theater with stadium seating and a fully enclosed space to see the films, just like a theater on land and both venues, whether the pool or the cinema, are complimentary. And one more thing about Brilliance of the Seas I wanted to talk about is the thermal spa. If you're looking for the perfect way to relax, then you really want to consider purchasing a thermal spa pass on Brilliance. The thermal spa pass gets you access to a few different services that can be enjoyed throughout your cruise. It includes hot stone chairs, a rainforest shower room, infrared sauna, and a steam room. Royal Caribbean sells day passes for the service, which offer unlimited access to the thermal spa. These passes are limited in quantity to prevent overcrowding, 
and there are two thermal spa pass prices, single and couples. It'll depend, of course, how long your sailing is. But when you get on board the ship, you go to the spot in order to buy it. You can't pre-purchase it before the sailing. So there you have a look at the five Royal Caribbean cruise ships nobody talks about and what you need to know about them. So hopefully this will help you out. I'm sure the comments are filled with, hey, Matt, what about this of the seas or this of the seas or that of the seas? I get it. I mean, we could talk about all the ships, but these five just kind of jumped out at me as kind of being easily overlooked. Let me know in the comments below, what is your favorite thing about Symphony, Liberty, Explorer, Odyssey, or Brilliance? And what ships would you nominate for the next time we do this kind of a list of cruise ships that nobody talks about? Looking forward to your comments down there below. Please do me a favor, hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. That way, YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and we'll talk again real soon.